Storing an integer in a computer isn't quite as simple as it seems. There are actually three ways that computers have stored negative numbers. Signed magnitude, one's complement, and two's complement. Let's take a look at all of them. Storing unsigned integers is easy. They're just stored as fixed length binary words. This means that there's a set number of bits we use, and each bit is a zero or a one. If you need a review of binary or hexadecimal numbers, see the video at the top of the screen. Since the numbers we're storing are unsigned, they're all positive, and the range of numbers that we can store is zero to two to the n minus one, where n is the number of bits we're using. When our numbers are signed, we have to be able to store both positive and negative numbers. The first way we'll look at for doing that is called signed magnitude. In this, the leftmost bit holds the sign. Zero means positive, one means negative. The rest of the bits hold the absolute value of the number. That's the magnitude of the number. That's why this is named signed magnitude. Here you can see the most negative and most positive numbers that we can represent. So the range is negative two to the n minus one minus one through two to the n minus one minus one. Signed magnitude as a strategy has two weaknesses. First, it has two ways to represent zero, positive zero and negative zero. That adds complexity to the circuitry because we have to handle them specially. For example, an equals test is no longer just all the bits match. The second weakness is that arithmetic operations have to deal with negative numbers differently than they deal with positive numbers. For example, we need separate subtraction and addition circuits and we have to pick which we need based on the signs of the operands. Again, that makes the circuitry more complex. Our second strategy for storing signed numbers is called one's complement. To make a number negative, we take its positive representation and flip all the bits. With this, we can still think of the leftmost bit as a signed bit. This is the largest positive number that we can represent, 31. This is the most negative number we can represent. To figure out its value, flip all the bits and we get 31. So this is storing negative 31. So the range of values we can represent again is two to the n minus one minus one through two to the n minus one minus one. With one's complement, we no longer need separate addition and subtraction circuits. We can add positive and negative numbers with normal binary arithmetic with one extra trick. The carry has to be wrapped around to the bottom most bit. Let's look at an example. This is the addition of two one's complement numbers, negative seven and 10. We'd better get three as a result. We do normal bitwise addition and get zero, one, zero. These add to two, which is zero carry the one, two, which is zero carry the one, two, which is zero carry the one, and now put that carry in the last position. The result is three. So, one's complement has made the arithmetic circuitry simpler, but we still have two ways to represent zero. Negating zero gives us a word with all ones, negative zero. The third way we can store signed integers is two's complement. With this method, the way we negate a number is to flip all the bits and then add one. For example, this is 17. To negate it, we flip all the bits and add one. So this is negative 17. It's important that neg negating a number twice gets us back to the number we started with. Yes, this is true for signed magnitude and for one's complement, but is it true for two's complement? While it isn't initially obvious, two's complementing a number twice does get us back to the original number. Before we go any further, one problem that both of the other options had was that they had two representations of zero. Is that true for two's complement? Let's test by negating zero. Flip the bits, add one, and we're back at zero. Negative zero and positive zero are the same, 
so we don't have two representations of zero. Woohoo! In two's complement, the leftmost bit does work as a sign bit, but it also gives us a trick for calculating the value of a number. In one's complement, when the sign bit was negative, we had to flip all the bits and find the positive magnitude to figure out what number we were holding. In two's complement, we can almost use normal conversion of binary to decimal. We just make the sign bit be the negative value of its normal multiplier. For example, in the six bit numbers we've been playing with, the positions count as one, two, four, eight, and 16 like normal binary, but the leftmost position counts as negative 32. So for this example, Positional math would say that the value of this number is negative 32 plus 8, which is negative 24. I could also figure out its value by negating to see what its positive magnitude is. I negate it by flipping all the bits and then adding 1. The result is 24, so my original number was negative 24. I'm glad those match. Now that we can calculate the value of any number in two's complement, we can see that the most negative number that we can get will only have a one in the sign position. Turning any of the other bits on would add a positive number, moving us away from that extreme. In our six bit case, that means the smallest number that we can re represent is negative 32. The largest number that we can represent has a zero in the sign bit and all of the rest of the bits ones. In our case, that gives us 31. So the range of numbers that we can represent is negative two to the n minus one to two to the n minus one minus one. Arithmetic in two's complement doesn't require any special circuitry. For example, adding is just bitwise addition. This example is negative eight plus 10. So we'd better get two as a result. So, we have three ways of storing signed numbers. Signed magnitude just uses the top bit to signify if the number is positive or negative. That requires special circuitry to deal with negative numbers and has two ways to represent zero. One's complement negates a number by flipping all the bits. With this, the need for special circuitry for addition is fixed, but we still have two ways to represent zero. Two's complement negates a number by flipping all the bits and adding one. This also does not require special circuitry and has the advantage that there is only one way to represent zero. This is what most computers use today.